And we're back. We are back. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talking Upstream, which is literally my favorite show that Dylan's on. He does a lot of shows. This one is my absolute favorite. And I have such a long list of favorite things that Dylan does. But this one is my favorite show starring Dylan. It comes out on Sundays on our YouTube channel. <laughs> anyway, uh, if you know us, we are some nobodies. My name is Zach. Uh, his name is Dylan. And what we do here is we find our favorite creators. We find uh, people that have created something that we absolutely love, uh, you know, and, and we kind of talk to them, chat about it, why you do what you do, how you do what you do. <sighs> so when I was younger, Dylan, I don't know if you know this or not, when I was younger, I wanted to do three things in my life. One, a stunt double until I jumped off a swing set once and I didn't like that whatsoever. Two, mm -hmm. I wanted to be uh, like a stunt double, but for motorcycles. And then I got a motorcycle and I didn't like that whatsoever, which so, I think is the same thing. So uh, not one and a half? <laughs> well, no, one was like for movies, like for other yeah. people that are exactly my size, luckily. Oh, uh, okay. the, the other one is like a daredevil, you know? Gotcha. Uh, number okay. three, I wanted to write for <laughs> SNL. And I actually like, I sent lots of, uh, you know, lots of jokes and uh, weird tapes uh, to who I thought was SNL. Um, I don't know if anyone got, I've never got anything back. Um, I even went and auditioned at Second City. Uh, and I don't know how that went because I got too drunk because I was so nervous. Uh, but I think it went pretty well. Anyway, sure. the reason I'm talking about this, I would like Dylan to please bring up our guest of the week. Oh, yeah. So uh, this week we are joined by Katie Rich. She's a comedian. She's a bruiser. She's a writer. Here she is. Hi. Hello, <laughs> Katie Rich. How are you? I'm good. I didn't know. Where were you sending these tapes and things? I'm concerned now. So, <laughs> this was in 1994 and 1995. Uh, I was in high school and I would just record myself doing what I thought was these bits. And I gave them to my dad and my dad told me he would send them away. And what, <laughs> what happened was he was like, oh, well, I heard from Lord Michaels and you have to be 18 years old. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. cool oh, cool. we sent him to that farm where my fish went. <laughs> Yeah. So either way, uh, it, 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 it never, it never, it never worked I'm out. I'm sorry. I have a follow. I have a lot of follow-up questions. But the first ask, one is: Does your father have anything to do with entertainment, or no. has he ever been to New York? Nope. Or I mean. Nope. My dad That's is kind of a born, nice, my dad, a nice is, dad. Yeah, he's born and raised in Maryland, uh, and he is a fine construction worker uh, at best, uh, entertaining to me only, and <laughs> that's about it. Uh, but anyway, thank you so much for being here. We're so thank excited. Thank you for having uh, me. Yeah, for those who like a little behind the scenes, we've tried to do this a couple of times, and uh, Colorado internet at the time is was not functioning. So, no. uh, yep, Miss Rich has been awesome and uh, hanging in there with thank us. Thank you. So, a writer for SNL, literally, <laughs> it was my dream job when I was younger. What was that like getting that job? Um, it was it was kind of crazy because I was I was also I was at Second City, and when you're when you're at Second City, when you're on the the main stage there, you kind of reach a point where th that was always my dream job. That's all I ever wanted, and then I got it, and I didn't die. I had a life to lead still. So I was like, Oh, and when you, when you have that job, you reach a point where you're just, you're finished. It's just not, it, mm -hmm. it, and it's not negative. It's just, I'm done. I've done, I've been here for three years and I have to move on. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And so, um, so I, I put in my notice, I said, I wasn't going to come back. And I was planning on like going to LA and like, I don't know how to drive. I was like going to learn how to drive and all this stuff. And then I actually got hired. I think it was like a month after I put in my notice. Wow. And so it was just such a reminder to just, you know, take your leap, take the risk if you're ready and, and something, you know, something will happen. So it was pretty, it was pretty cool. I had auditioned for them multiple times. I did not give the tapes to my dad. I was actually there. Um, and 
not saying that you know what you did was wrong but um i think what you did was harder maybe to get um yeah. to get there um and and so they so they knew me and um and it just happened to to work out it was it was awesome yeah that, that's so great. I, you know, I always had that idea mm -hmm. like, oh, come on, Zach, you're so clever. You have blah, 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 ideas, ideas, ideas. Uh, and then my dad just kept saying no. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I think but... the other thing too is there's no, I mean, what you did is so funny and lovely. I just, I, I will never forget that. That's just like, what a good dad. But, um, <laughs> but there's no path, like there's no clear path to that job. It's not like a, you know, it's not like good to be a doctor or a lawyer, like, you know, that you have to do X, Y, and Z, and then you take this test and you're there. So I think everyone's path was, it was, was different. Um, which is why if someone asked me like, what's your advice? It's like, I, I don't know. I think my, my best advice would be to just keep working and keep developing your voice, you know, as opposed to like, do be here on this day and it'll happen for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've always had that cool idea. And the thing is, when I would watch SNL before, you know, I, I kind of grew up with that. My dad loved that show. So I grew up watching it. And it was like the highlight of comedy for me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And there was something about it where when I watch a movie, I'm able to you know, kind of let the let Hollywood wash over me and I kind of fall into the story. Um, you know, same thing with some shows. When you watch SNL, you, you almost see like the workings of it. You can see the fact that these are people, you know, sometimes reading cue cards, but you see their actors, you can see the writing behind it. And I think that's so interesting. And the cool thing for me growing up was that I always saw the writing in it you know like i could see and i'm like yeah. wow like that that room must have been so cool just throwing ideas out and you know that kind of thing uh and, and it was so interesting that normally you don't want to see that you know, normally you try to hide that but with snl i think it's it's a cool highlight that you could tell from almost every level that you know there's so much talent in there um i, I always say that if if people if everyone was able to see the show live no one would I'm not going to say you wouldn't criticize it because that's not fair, but, but everyone would just, I think it, it, you would be blown away. It's just magical what, what goes on and what the carpenters do and the wig designers do and just what everyone does and, and how fast it is. And it, it really is just magical that it works. Mm -hmm. And um, to actually get to see that was crazy. And it was so crazy too, how quickly it then became a job. Like you get to a point where you're just like, Oh, you know, this is yeah. my job. And then, but then every once in a while, something, something would happen and you would be reminded of like, Oh, this is actually pretty magical. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I bet. I mean, you know, doing something even just for us, which is this show sometimes it's like, it's a job. I don't want to come up with something like, I don't want to be funny <laughs> today. Today's not the day for this. Um, <laughs> But not not let happen to like you know the 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 vastness of your work though like you've written and you've produced and you've acted um, what what's like your favorite thing to do when it comes to creation of you know TV or movies? I always quote um, Harold Ramis on that, and I always say all of it because <laughs> it's it's true because every, all of it is different and there's something so thrilling to write something and then see it on TV. And you're like, I wrote that. And, and people are laughing and Oh my God. Um, production is so interesting too, because there's, there's such like a, a business aspect to it, which I've never really dealt with. And of course, acting has its own challenges, but that's also so fun, you know, and even the, the disparate things in acting of like voiceover or on camera or thing, you know what I mean? So, um, it all it all satisfies something at some point in time and it's i'm just so lucky that i've been able to do all of that because it gives you such an appreciation for everything that goes into something um something in entertainment so i'm 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 glad that i I've, I've been able to see so many sides of it yeah one of the things that you do that really is interesting to me is chicago party ant um, and then, you know, I, I stumbled upon that and I'm like, wow, this is a really, really funny show. Uh, I'm always, I'm always into adult animation that doesn't really cater towards kids, you mm -hmm. know, like just kind of use this yeah. medium for what it's supposed to be, which is like, go, go at it, be, be quirky and funny. Um, but when looking it up, you, you have your name on like every part of that. Uh, what's that like, like creating something, being in something, but also producing something that, uh, is, I guess your vision, right? 
Um, well, there, you know, there was, there was, there was a group of us, but it, it was definitely, um, it's so interesting because you start, you, you start thinking of other things that you would never think of. So like, um, even when you're writing something, you're, you're thinking like, oh, maybe we should try to reuse this background because we only have this much in our budget and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So so while it's not, it's not a hindrance, it, it could be, I guess, if you went crazy about it, but um, it does affect the way that you're, you're creating things because you're also thinking about the budget and you're thinking about, you know, oh, is this, uh, I don't want to make the animators create another set and blah, blah, blah. So, um, so you have a, a lot of other things on your, on your mind when you're creating something, you know, even even when you're recording something, you're kind of like, Ooh, I bet I could get this done in an hour. So then we don't have to pay for studio time and blah, blah, blah. You, you know, there's, hmm. there's just, there's just more to it than just the creative part. And, and, and sometimes that can actually be really, really helpful because when you have a constraint, I think sometimes that can actually help your brain so that you're not just, I mean, how paralyzing is it when you see a blank page and you're like, I mm -hmm. guess I could put anything to, you know? So, um, so I actually found that kind of helpful and kind of interesting because it's essentially a puzzle that you have to solve, um, with all these moving parts. And, um, and so I've, I, I'm really, like I said, I'm, I'm really grateful for that too, because I think it's actually helped my writing. Now, when when coming up with the when coming up with the idea of um, Chicago Party Ant was was it animation was that like the goal first or like yeah. was it the story and you're like hey is it would this be best animation or the best sitcom No, we always wanted it to be animation because uh, the thing I always say about animation is it makes harsh things a little less harsh, and then it also makes like poetic things a little bit more poetic too. Um, but I think some of the stuff that we deal with and some of this, some of the characters that we have and things like that are easier in, they're easier in an animated show. Um, you can just kind of get away with more stuff. You can be a little bigger, you can be a little more wild. Um, and especially with a, you know, a middle-aged female character who is pretty wild herself, I think, that it's it's maybe easier for people to digest that um through animation yeah there is no. something around your neck dylan i just it's want you to know that i know thank you <laughs> it, it's a very affectionate cat i'm watching that's over. so sweet i've she never is, seen a cat just is, hug a person like that that's she the is, sweetest this entire week of shows is going to be guest starring this cat. Yeah, no, like the cat's been all around Dylan. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's so. <laughs> Probably sweet. Dylan threw in a trash can earlier, so uh, <laughs> don't want to talk about that. Um, it's so, all it's all practice work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, when oh. when it comes to like voice acting on something that you're kind of writing and creating versus voice acting on something that's not your property whatsoever it do you, and you were talking about restraint earlier do you like the restraint uh of having another property to work with or do you kind of really because i saw that you were also uh a voice actor on on a batman show um mm -hmm. on batman the, the audio adventures mm -hmm. now i'm not sure exactly how many characters you played on there but you have to be within like a certain range of that versus your own stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've done a, I've done voiceover for a few things, and when you're doing it for your own show, you, it, it you're also like I said, you're thinking about other things. Like I remember doing, uh, I, I would, re I remember recording lines and being like, oh, for Chicago Party, I'm being like, actually, we need to change this because in episode blah blah blah, this change and blah, blah. So you're also kind of writing as you're as mm -hmm. you're doing it. Whereas if it's someone else's work, your job is to bring their vision to life. You don't have to worry about those things. You're there to serve what they've put on, on the page. And so, um, the Batman, the audio adventures is actually a really interesting project. That was, um, one of my friends from SNL did that Dennis McNicholas, and we're just going to do season. We're going to record season two next week too. And, um, it's just so, it's so cool. It's such an interesting, um, format. And he did such a, he wrote all of it and he did such a great job with it. So, so that, that's really the main difference is, I, if it's, if I didn't write it, I'm going to show up and I'm going to do the best for you. If I did write it, I'm going to be sitting there being like, should we change this? You know, like you're, you're going to be a little bit, uh, 
looser and and more into into the the actual writing itself i think and what what characters on the batman like podcast did you the audio version of which characters did you play I did a bunch of them. I did a lot of children um, because mm-hmm. I have the voice of a child and I did a few. Oh, I, re- I did one that's basically Mrs. Roper from Three's <laughs> Company. I did a, I did a bunch of like I didn't do any of the like Batman characters. I did a lot of oh, the sure. like people in Gotham and the mm-hmm. and I got to do one scene with, um, you know, Brett Spiner mm-hmm. data. Mm-hmm. And he had already recorded it. And I was like a little kid that was talking to him. And so I literally, I got to kind of act. He wasn't there, obviously, but I got to do it with him. And he was so creepy and good. And um, Mm. it was really, really fun. It was really cool. Yeah, I love his comedic side. Because a lot of people only know him from Star Trek. But when you watch him, like, dude, where's my car? It's like, oh, yes, he's hilarious. Yeah, you're a kind of a weirdo. That's cool. He's so weird. And then um, the another fun thing I got to do was cartoon president. Um, which was on Showtime. And that was really interesting too, because that would change. They did that every week. And so mm. it was, it was, it, it, I mean, topical animation is almost unheard of. So there would be times where they would be like, could you just record this one line? Like this thing happened. And um, so that was really exciting too. So I've gotten to do a lot of, you know, not just your typical animation. I've gotten to do a lot of other, other things. Um, and it, it's 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 all different, but it's all so fun. And you're just like in a booth, and <laughs> you don't have to wear makeup, which is nice. You don't have to worry well, about. Tell me about it. I know both of your makeup looks really good. <laughs> we had a show today. It's an important one. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you know being being an actor, being like a writer, everything. Uh, when you're on SNL as a writer, do do you have an opportunity to kind of? Move, like do you also have to like audition separately to be like you know an actor versus because i know that some of the writers get to be like kind of back uh, uh background characters some of the writers get to be actual just you know stage actors what, what's that process like well so uh, i mean as far as the background stuff or even like the the keys which are the pictures that you see in, in weekend update above the anchor that's literally just like we need someone and oh. you're you're sag so just do it like that's not necessarily <laughs> a um jeremy byler who's this amazing writer and he's so wonderful he actually was ultron in um a, there was a pre-tape with Scarlett Johansson where we they, they made like Black Widow a romantic comedy, and he was Ultron because it was like just easier to have him in sure. that suit. And then you have like the writer there, and you have you know what I mean. Um, so as far as actually um, becoming a cast member, that's that's just the same thing where you have to go through the audition process, and um, you know a lot of it is. Uh, a, lo- a lot of it is also sometimes if there's not really a spot for someone, they'll hire them to write for a while and then mm. and then maybe they'll um, switch over to cast. But but the cast, a, a lot of the cast does a lot of the writing, too. There's a there's a second city ness to it in the sense that. I think people were always surprised that at Second City, the people that were acting were the people that wrote it. I think they people always thought that somebody wrote it for them. But um, there's. A, a lot of the cast members really are fantastic writers as well. So um, like Kate and Cecily, you know, they're just like very, very good writers. So. Yeah. I I love second city. I love all the actors that came from second city. And I mean, I, you know, I, I watched Saturday Night Live first, which led me to second city. And then that just wealth of people, uh, which really, you know, I, I think the amazing people came out of Second City. Um, and you were also on some other comedy stuff, too. Like, you did Comedy Bang Bang as well. Like, what, oh, what, yeah. what what's that like, being on such, like, a high-level podcast that, like, everyone <laughs> loves? Comedy Bang Bang is so fun because Scott is just the coolest guy. He you, you, You're basically, like, he's like, what's your character's name? And what's their thing? Okay. And that's it. Like, okay. he doesn't, like, he's so chill and you just come in with whatever you want. And you just get to fuck around with really, really funny people. And the hardest part about doing that podcast is being quiet and not like laughing so hard when the other people, like when he's doing the interview and stuff like that. So, um, so that's always really fun. I got to do one with Ike Baird Holtz, who is, you know, on Chicago party Ant with me, we got to do one together, which was so fun. Um, but 
Yeah, that's just like that's such a joyful experience because it's just like come in and truly fuck around with each other and it's the best. Um so so yeah, that's that's always a really really exciting thing to get to do. Yeah, it definitely sounds like when you watch those episodes, you're like, these they're having <laughs> mm-hmm. such a great they're having such a great time. Uh and yeah, that's what we try to bring up with some of our shows. Not this one. This is a very serious and boring show. Um, oh, really? So, so, oh yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. I'll change yeah. my is, act, I'll change my demeanor then. We're gonna have to redo pretty... these entire last 20 minutes. You're way too jolly. <laughs> it's okay. I'm just gonna slow the whole thing down. Just... <laughs> uh Dylan, you, you, have cl- any... you have to get closer to the mic. Me <laughs> today oh. on talking upstream. Oh yeah, you have to do yeah. like ASMR. To... Yeah, it's, it's M- <laughs> NPR style today. Uh, it's ASNR. It's auto some nobody's response. <laughs> See, this is why. This is why I don't let him talk. This is why I don't talk very often because yeah. it's just bits the yeah. entire. Time. I thought that was good. And you should have. No, I don't talk. That was Thank great. You. No, no, I thought what you did. I thought that was a good bit. It was Thank a you. good bit. Uh, oh. he's, been, he's been pitching that bit for. Three I've been weeks waiting. Now. I've been waiting for someone with certification to tell me my bits are good for decades. So now I have the. Now I have the cred. I, I bestow upon you. <laughs> yeah. Um. So w- when coming up with ideas, how do you like? So the. The thing that I, I come up with a lot of just really stupid ideas all the time. And I text them to Dylan and he obviously ignores me because he has something to do. Yeah. Um, now, when you have like a dumb idea, uh, what's your process in trying to figure out like, is this, is this like a skit? Is this uh like, is this a, like a, a, a series? Is this a, like a feature length? Like, you know, how, how does, how do those things go? Up? Or do you come up with like, okay, I got to come up with some skits. I need these tiny short um, kind of things. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what you're, if you're assigned something, obviously it's a little bit different, but when you just randomly come up with something, yeah, it's like, oh, is this, is this a tweet? Is this a stand-up joke? Is this an idea that could turn into something? Is this a character? I mean, there's just so many ways to, to approach something like that. And, and sometimes it changes, right? Like sometimes you have an idea and you're like, oh, I actually don't think that would make a good pilot script but that would actually be a good like short little essay for McSweeney's or something you know what I mean but because there's so many avenues out there um I think I think no idea is really dumb it'll probably find its way somewhere and even if it's not the actual idea that ends up being something it it will get you somewhere you know what I mean don't encourage him oh (laughs) should I not I have please do encourage him I have some terrible oh, they're ideas. Great. They're, they're not going to find anything but a trash can, possibly. Uh, Dylan, <laughs> my friend, I talk all the time. Do you have any questions for Miss Katie Rich? Um, I think primarily um, I'm just kind of curious about what the general process of doing an SNL episode is like. I know this is kind of specific, but I know a lot of people would probably want – I have a lot of friends who actively watch SNL and follow it. Um, and I'm sure some of them would be curious, like what, what it's like to take an episode where it's like, you sit down, do you have sketches in reserve that you kind of, you sometimes bring forward or do you write only specifically for the weekly guests? Do you write over the course of that first week? What's that general kind of writing process look like? Well, we, um, so basically I, I, I mostly worked on weekend update so Mm -hmm. that, that has a slightly different process. Um, but in general, you know, Monday you come in and that's when the, the host is there. And so you, you know, everyone meets the host and, um, and then Tuesday is actually the writing night. So everything gets written on Tuesday and then Wednesday is where there's the table read and then things are picked and then Thursday and Friday are rehearsal. And then obviously Mm -hmm. Saturday's the show. Um, Update is a little different. It changed a lot since I got there because of just the nature of the news. And so the vast majority, we're there every day, but the vast majority of our writing is done, you know, like Friday and Saturday, Hmm. because that's when we know what's, what's actually worth talking about. Um, But you can write a lot of evergreen stuff on Monday and, you know, you can write jokes about like Florida man sticks alligator in his asshole or whatever that is. And, and, you know, you can write those kind of jokes (laughs) earlier Mm -hmm. in the week. Um, As far as having sketches like in reserve, um, there's a lot of times that a sketch will uh, go to dress rehearsal and it won't make it. And so they'll bring it back with a different host. Um, as far as writing for the host, um, yeah, there's a, there's definitely, you know, y- you find out 
throughout the, you know, like Monday and Tuesday, you kind of find out what the host is comfortable doing, what they want to talk about, what they want to do. Um, if there's any guests that are like, are going to cameo, things like that. Um, and then you go from there and most hosts are pretty involved. I mean, they'll, they really get in there and, and they talk to the writers and they, you know, offer input. And those are the most fun to work with. Some of them aren't as, as hands-on and that's, that's great too. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's definitely what's, what's nice about it is you can, you can turn your brain off when you're not working. You're not like expected necessarily to generate content when we're off. Um, and especially with weekend update, the, the, the kind of nice thing about that was you truly couldn't write on your days off because who knows what would mm -hmm. <laughs> what would even be worth talking about by the time there was a show so um so that's it and it, it it runs the way that it ran in the very beginning like it has not changed that process is mm -hmm. still that way i would say the the thing that's probably changed the most is is weekend update as far yeah, as how that gets written. yeah yeah so it, it, oh, it, 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 similar to the only other show i can think of that does the constant week produ week long production thing would be south park that's kind of the traditional yeah. other mm -hmm. show people think of when it comes to like just rapid turnover right um no it's really fascinating it's been going on for over 40 years now and it's still managing yeah. to just be as titanic as it is yeah. yeah now i i did have a question about like the the mini skits that are on weekend update though you know when you have like uh such talent like you know fred armison and bill Hader and even bobby moynihan like in 2013 which is when you started i think writing on snl mm -hmm. and they have like those characters that pop up only on weekend update um yeah how does that work do, does do, do, like say you wanted you had an idea for stefan would you be able to pitch that idea to them or is that like a, a, like a specific person who does the guests all weekend update. So those characters, they're they're called features, and um, essentially, so they have they have writers for them. So um, you know, Mulaney writes Stefan, and so um, no, I you wouldn't come up to Mulaney and be like, I have an idea for Stefan. I mean, that's his character, but um, we can pitch jokes on it. I mean, there's tables, obviously we table everything. And so you can always pitch jokes on things like that. But one thing we would do sometimes is if something would happen in the news, we would maybe approach like, for example, Kate did this character, Cecilia Jimenez, who was the woman who, I don't know if you remember the Jesus painting. It was yep. like this and the restoration. she completely fucked it up. Yep. And it was just so funny. And then a couple years later, the Christian, Christian, uh, Christian Aldo, uh, Ronaldo. I'll just say Ronaldo. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, he got his statue. And if you Google it, it's the most insane looking fucking statue in the world. And we were like, maybe we oh, could have Kate. Ma yeah. Maybe we could have Kate be that, say that she made the statue. You know what I mean? So, so sometimes we would suggest oh like, yeah, like this is a week for, you know, this is a good week for Big Poppy or this is a good week for, mm -hmm. you know, for Drunk Uncle or, or things like that. But no, for the most part, they have those features have their own writers and um, we we would help them, but we wouldn't. Uh, there were a few features that the update people primarily did themselves, um, but but not 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 a ton. I, if you remember, um Oh God, what was his name? The critic, the 19, the 18 critic from the eight, Jeb, Jebediah Atkinson. The update people did that one. Okay. Um, that was Taryn. We did that one with Taryn. And that started, the way these characters start sometimes is it was literally a Saturday and it was Saturday morning. And Seth saw in the, Seth Meyer saw in the paper that the New York Times had to retract a review of the Gettysburg Address. <laughs> <laughs> because this critic yeah, had this critic had slammed it and so they finally retracted it and seth was like <laughs> that is so funny and so essentially it was taryn is this like dandy fop of a critic who hates everything um so so yeah so and then che has a few colin colin is like the king of features um but but yeah, those are those are a blast. 
those are really really fun <laughs> yeah i think i think my favorite one of those features on weekend update was was when uh fred armison was um the guy who the comedian who would just try to riff off the headlines and he's yeah. like oh yeah uh, you know yeah bomb goes off and <laughs> And he never had a punchline. Never had a yeah, punchline. Never even said anything. No punchline. Yeah, oh, the, I love that. And the other thing that's cool about those is that it's a way to address things that are in the news that sometimes might be kind of too heavy to address or things that mm -hmm. should be addressed more than just in jokes and things like that. So, um, so yeah, Fred Armisen was also like the king of of features. He had so yeah, many. I imagine. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> I, I met him in Wilmington, Delaware once. Oh yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was cool. like he, he was testing out this new uh, uh, th this new show that he was like working on, where he was like this old uh, this older uh, uh, guitar player with this old band that was coming out of retirement. And he's like, "Hey, like I'm gonna do this whole show and uh, and uh, his character is that okay?" And we're like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." And yeah. later on, he he come out and, and chat with us. He's super super funny guy. Hmm. Um, Dylan, do you have any more questions for Miss Katie Rich before we get on to what we do in the show? Uh, I think more will come to me probably as we go on. All right, you got perfect. It. Okay, so Miss Katie Rich, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna pitch to you two original ish ideas. Uh, now we kind of slowly turn those into sketches, uh, okay. just because um, we were told recently that most of our pitches are premises, uh, <laughs> and just so we can maybe work on something a little so, bit smaller. So they're, they're, they're really... like more, they're more sketch premises than like. Uh, a long running television show. <laughs> it really real it made us realize how sandy our foundation is. <laughs> yes, yes. And we rely a lot on our character and uh you know our real yes. positivity yes. over uh, okay. the weight of these pitches. It turns out well, pitch means something in a lot of like writing terminology. We were just using it as yeah. like, telling you something. Yeah, I, would, I wish I wish we'd have learned that before episode 33 of our uh, you know I mean uh because that's yeah. now it's in the lexicon. It's like what we're gonna but do. But you learned this. it now you yeah. know. Oh, now you That's know. true. All right. <laughs> Premises. All right. So I'm I'm gonna go first. Is that okay, okay. Dylan? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's not up to you, Ms. Rich. No, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh wait, her. Okay. Oh. What? No. Don't okay. Worry about so it. say your pitch. Here's premise. my Sorry. here's my premise. Right? Okay. Uh, premise pitch. Uh, there is a couple. Uh, mm -hmm. One works in the HR of this uh, super elite uh, high tech company, like a Tesla, similar, right? But not a not Tesla. Okay. The other one is the, the captain of a submarine. Now okay. they're together, right? This is a new submarine and it has uh, this brand new nuclear engine that no one's seen or tested before. And on its very first, it's maiden voyage, if you will. Okay. It disappears. Okay. Nobody knows if it was destroyed, stolen, nothing. Now, because the partner works in HR and does not want this company to go under, they take it upon themselves to do all the legwork. And what they find out, based on the last location, is that this submarine shrunk. So, the difference between sunk and shrunk is a solid HR. So, that's my pitch. I want to... <laughs> okay. Wait. So, may I ask? This is what I always ask when someone pitches oh, please, something. Please, please. What, what was it about that that... What, is, what, was, what was the thing that came to you that made you laugh so what 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 made me laugh the most and then i had to alter the idea was i thought it was so funny for a kid to find a toy submarine on a beach and when they opened it up there was dead bodies inside they were just like, oh so everyone's dead well that was how it originated because they oh, shrunk and it's it, like i don't it. know shrinking technology i think the okay. bodies would just blow <laughs> up or something uh so the idea was like it would just open up like this foul odor would just come out and i thought that was just so weird uh then it kind of turned into okay well they're just shrunk people that'd be funny too right. but i don't know what a kid would do with that i feel like they would shake it first or whatever who knows um yeah but then i but then talking to people and having pitches they're like well what's what why do i care about this who's in this what, what, who, who am i rooting for so that's when i had to turn it into an hr detective uh mission and uh, so look, the hr person she or he, their partner is the captain. And so mm -hmm. they have more of a reason to Oof. find this, correct? Uh, emotional and financial, yeah. Okay. And so, I mean, I don't... I don't think that that's necessarily a sketch. I mean, to me, that's kind of like... 
that seems more of like a kind of like a movie, right? Or, or well, like... yeah, it 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 does. Well, these are these are long pitches. I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. And, <laughs> uh, no, uh, I do have another. I do have another uh, sketch idea. But I'm still I'm still throwing this in. I like this idea. I like the idea of this HR woman looking for a partner in a in a shrunken submarine. And then, like, she finds him, and they have to figure out how to have a relationship where he's literally this big or her yeah or her yeah they're very small and they don't know what happened uh and their company is going under and so is their marriage it's probably not that good now that i say it out loud uh, i'm gonna work on another one while dylan pitches there's something very funny about someone being shrunk and having to like ha- ha- like having to continue your marriage with someone who's mm-hmm yeah, no, like I think I think law, is tall. law proceedings, also marriage counseling with a very small person is entirely <laughs> funny to me. That's funny. You have that scene where they're like submitting their relationship to HR and yeah. she's sitting in a chair and he's on the desk. Like tiny yeah, and like, yeah. hello. Yeah. And, so can, and, can and so you, you want it to be HR because of the pun. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. Okay. And also HR really gets a bad rap if you think about it. No one ever says, like, oh my God, I cannot wait to speak to HR tomorrow. Uh, no one ever says that. I do have another pitch though, if, okay. you, if you were like a skit. Okay. Sketch. And here it is. Okay. Knock on the door. Okay. <laughs> Guy answers the door. <clears throat> it's a package. When he okay. opens it up because of earbuds, he decides for it, doesn't look at it, doesn't read what he's doing, opens it up real fast. What is this your is this yours? You're such an asshole. Go for it. <laughs> what do you got? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Opens finish, it up real fast. Finish your pitch. It's a bloody hand. Okay. He's like, oh my God. When he looks at the package, it's actually the neighbor downstairs. Now he has to have an awkward conversation with this elderly lady who's downstairs uh, trying to find out if there's a person missing or whatever. Um, and that, yeah. So the bloody, the premise is that the mail got delivered to the wrong place. Yeah. But it's a bloody hand. Yeah. And so then what happens? Well, then they have to have this awkward conversation of like, do you need help? And because the woman downstairs is like, I'm not supposed to say anything because these people told me that my husband. uh," And they're like, now it's like, well, who wants this package with the hand? It normally doesn't go this bad for me. It's not bad. It's I'm I'm just trying to make it. I mean, these are good. Like these, it's good imagery. And and Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see like, then where where does that go like well i i i zach well, can you see that my arms are crossed <laughs> are you should it cross your arms because it's a sign that you're not giving and receiving information it's a sign that you're closed <laughs> off oh i no i'm def i've definitely gave information <laughs> for this episode before we shot this <laughs> uh. <laughs> this is what happens in season two things get a little awry <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll come up with another Two one. Two of any fast. story is the darkest. So this is when Zach and I get at each other's throats. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Wait, Dylan, are you saying that that was your idea? It was definitely what I was gonna. It was, I was gonna say something very similar to that. Mm. Well, I what was a, yours? Uh, so a loner opens up, gets some package delivered, signs oh. for it. <laughs> okay. He opens it up. Okay. And it's a body part. Okay. No. He's confused. Yes. To the address. It's addressed to the lonely, kind old woman upstairs. Okay. And yeah. he's like, he goes up and he goes, I think this is for you. Are you okay? And she goes, oh, okay. She takes it and leaves. And okay. it, 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 that was all I had had. <laughs> in, in, in all fairness, I got flustered and I said the wrong skit. Uh, <laughs> and I did inadvertently pitch Dylan's pitch, which has never happened on exactly 50 episodes of this show. Yeah. But... <laughs> I'm trying to, cause I'm trying to think then is she, is she, so she's not aware that that's what she ordered. She didn't order it. I think the, the oh. assumption is that she didn't order it. This is a, a threat display. It's a, by it's someone. a ransom note that got misdelivered. Oh, got it. Got it. Got it. What I was, <laughs> what I was going to say <laughs> before I said package, cause literally a knock at my door, I've received a package and I got flustered. Uh, was it was going to be a Downton Abbey, but of Jabba's palace, and you had to go through all the under 
uh, uh, workings of what it's like to be an indentured servitude for such a horrendous uh, worm beast. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to stick with the HR one because I did I did pitch Dylan's pitch. So Act, Dylan, you get to Dylan. you get to pitch one of Zach's pitches then. Oh, there we go. Oh, let me open up our <laughs> list of ideas. That's only fair. It is only fair. Oh man, there's some pretty bad ones in there, I would assume. Lord of Fjords. Hey, that's a good one. <laughs> Lord of Fjords. It feels yeah. like a lot of your pitches are are pun pun no, made or like not... the the Okay. This one's not bad. Jurassic Park, but the clone historical figures instead. And then it happens like Jurassic Park where they just break out and start eating everybody. Yeah, I think that's great. Would they still only clone women? Because they don't want good them question, to... Good question, actually. Marie Curie's have... running around and she's radiated. They don't want yeah. them to reproduce? Yeah. Mary Shelley just hide in a corner somewhere. Uh, I like. I love that. Just like, well, we only did women because they can't reproduce. Like, well, that's... Not how humans work exactly, but that's fine. Yeah, exactly. And, and also, uh, it's not so much that there are puns. Uh, it's just that I'm like, well, if I need to pitch a, a quick discovery uh, you, you want to have a, a good title. It's, a good, it's got to be yes. catchy. It's I get it. Catchy. No, that's that's very true. That's and very I true. I tell you, honestly, if you ask the average human what their knowledge of fjords is, uh, very low. <laughs> <laughs> very low. Their lovely formations in the Baltic area. Mm -hmm. See, <laughs> that's well, all I know. Well, you're <laughs> a target audience. That's effectively the definition. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, of, of the 19 pitches that you've been, that you've received today, uh, which one is the most uh, less annoying? <laughs> They're not a, these aren't annoying pitches oh. at all. They're just it, it's it's just like the the they're good. Um, they seem like good little short things mm -hmm. that just need one more layer. They just yeah. need one more thing. That's yeah. all. Um, I think that there's something. I think that there's something really funny about a guy like a young kid who helps an old woman escape the mafia or something. I mean, there's that that's that's really funny to me. Um, and then that's something you two could work on together, but you would have to put Dylan first. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> we are learning. All right. Let's just say, let's just say that Miss Katie Rich has chosen the idea that both Dylan and I both pitched, uh, accidentally, uh, which is, uh, inadvertent delivery, accidental delivery. Um, okay. So. Let's I also think that that would be a good, the first thing that that made me think of was that would be a really good commercial for a, a co like for like UPS or something because like <laughs> their competitor, like you, like, you know, it's FedEx delivered it wrong and it's like, see how important it is to have something yeah. go to the right place One um, little number off, and yeah. discreet shipping. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Discreet. Accurate and discreet. That's great. Um, okay, so, Miss Rich, you have an idea, which is something like this, right? You have this kind of very loose idea. And what what would you say is, like, you know, from a writer point of view, what's one of the first things you do? You, you, do you jot it down? Do you immediately start working on it? Do you text your friend and hope that they'll actually respond to you? As far as just, like, a random thing that mm -hmm. comes to me that has nothing to do with, like, anything I'm working on. or um, Usually what I do is I'll, like, I'll write it down and I'll – wait a day because sometimes you know especially if you're like tired or high or drunk you know like who knows what you, you want to be in like a, i want to sleep on it mm -hmm. and then if i still like it then i'll be like huh okay um and then it usually helps me my my husband is the most lovely and normal and great person to just say something to and he'll either be like that's nothing or oh that's something um so it's kind of like did you did you ever watch a david letterman when he would do is this anything uh possibly i don't remember off david letterman used to do this bit where he would be like is this anything and it would be like i don't know some random woman with hula hoops and and he would be like <laughs> do you think this is anything and paul would be like no, I don't think that's anything. And then he would be like, it's actually something. She's doing a show at the, blah, blah. you know what I mean? Like, so he would do that. Okay. So that's kind of what I, I like to ask someone like, is that, is this anything? And, and then, and then you go from there kind of determining 
well then what what is it then what what form of of what form should this take hmm. um and and you and you go from there um yeah so when, when you're when you're hired as a writer and you got to be funny for a living, you got to come up with like things constantly. Do you give yourself time to just let your brain wander on like just personal projects? Oh yeah. I think, I think if you're working on, I mean, you can't work on too much, but I think working on other things always helps the other things that you're working on, which I know is a redundant thing to say, but, um, because then you can take a break and you can focus on something else. And then sometimes you'll actually get your answer when working on that thing. You know what I mean? So um, like if you're in a, like, obviously if you're at SNL, you have to make sure that's done first, but you know, we, we would get our summer off or we, you know, so we, a lot of us would work on other things during that time. Um, and it's always, I think it's best to always have, if you have projects that are happening at the same time, that they're very different. So if you're at SNL, probably you don't necessarily want to be then working on in your off days, something that's a topical sketch comedy show. <laughs> you know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, um, right. so it's always fun to, it's, it's always really fun to, to have something that's the opposite. And I think you'll hear like a lot of comedians too, when they're not working on, when they're in their off time, they watch like murder shows or they watch like some, like they, they watch something that has nothing to do with comedy whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. I consume nonstop true crime. Yeah. If I'm not, if I'm not speaking true crimes in my face, <laughs> not funny at all. Um, okay. So we have this idea, right? Let's say now we're in day two okay. and you, you pass it through the hubs and he's like, hmm, that's actually something. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. So now the next process you have, like, do, do you try to figure out what the medium is, whether it's like a, like a skit, whether it's a short film, whether it's a, a, a cartoon, um, or do you just start working on what the thing is and kind of let it work itself out? Well, it depends on what I think it is. If I think it's just kind of like, oh, this might be like a stand up bit, or this might be something like that i'll just kind of work on it on my own if i think it's something that is could be like a show or a feature I'll, I'll then basically what i'll do is i'll try to come up with a little just a little paragraph of what i think it is and i'll send it to my reps and see what they say um because a lot of times what they'll say is oh that's actually similar to this that's actually already going on you, you know you kind of want to know also what else is out there before you really dive into something. So, so that's usually the next thing I do is make sure it's not like already being done. And then, and then you kind of go from, and then you kind of go like, well, what is it? Who are these people in it? What, what exactly like, who are the characters and the relationships um, and the, and the tone of it. And, and then, you know, you go, you go from there. Yeah. So if, if, if we were to go after like a skit, right, like a sketch comedy, mm -hmm. um, are there some basic rules that you, you kind of imply or employ, like as far as length or, um, we talked to some people when writing scripts, it's like, all right, at minute seven, this needs to happen at minute, whatever this needs to happen. Is there anything along those lines when it comes to sketch comedy or do you just kind of let the joke hit itself? I, I always, I tend to avoid you don't necessarily want to give people those kind of mathematical instructions. There's a, well, there's a book called save the cat that mm -hmm. everyone reads that is going to write a movie. And one of my friends pointed out the other day, she was like every single movie now at 20 minutes is when the premise, like the inciting incident happens because that's what that book says. Um, when you're doing a sketch, I mean, a sketch is a sketch for a reason. If if you're writing a sketch and it looks like it's going to be 20 minutes long, then that's a, like a one act. That's not like necessarily a sketch. Um, mm. So it's it's just also it, it it'll maybe tell you, but I would say that for the most part, if you don't know by page three the 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 premise of the sketch. Um, Unless that's intentional, um, you, you you might want to you might want to look it over. Now, when ha when having an idea for a sketch, which is basically a joke 
uh, you know, like kind of an open ended joke, but you don't have an ending to it. Is that like your first priority is like getting to at least knowing what the end's going to be? Um, well, it depends on what kind of a sketch it is. Like one of my favorite sketches that 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 aired when I was still working there was um, Anna Dresden did a sketch for uh, it was with Adam Sandler and he's a tour guide in Rome. He does like tour gu- tour. He runs tours in in Italy, and essentially the premise of the the sketch is he's like, look, I have noticed that people try they get mad because they think like i'm gonna go on a hike if you don't like hiking here you won't like hiking in italy like if you're sad here you're going to get on a plane and be sad in italy like essentially the whole it's it's like tampering your expectations for that you don't necessarily need an ending because it's just gonna it's a commercial right so you know how commercials end and and things like that if the sketch itself is something where the ending I mean, the, the ending is usually a button. It's usually a joke. Mm-hmm. But if it's one of those things where the ending is like a twist or, or something, that's, you know, that's a little different. But sketches are notoriously hard to end. I mean, the, it's simply because they either like trail off or, mm-hmm. you know, you, you have to come up with like that good joke. Um, so, so I don't think I've ever let like not having an ending stop me. Um because you don't necessarily have to have a character doesn't really have to have an arc necessarily in a in a sketch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I wouldn't let that stop you if you don't have an idea of how it's going to end. Hmm. Now, if you have, say, an idea where you could turn it into something that could be elongated out, like say we have this idea where it's a funny joke about um, a delivery going wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, it could also be the beginning of a crime thriller that leads to a buddy cop between like a young stoner dude and an, an older lady. Oh. Or it could just be a funny little thing about uh, this old woman does not want to know that her husband's kidnapped. Um, that kind of thing. How, how do you how do you work what the best way to do with a story is? Like, how do you <laughs> I, I guess that's kind of a stupid question, but like. No, do, it's do not. Have, I think one I'm, thing that you for have, the record, Zach, I'm not laughing at you. I had a I had an idea for this sketch, but that's okay. Right, and cool. so you we're still talking about it as a sketch. I the the I had an idea for the premise, but that's okay. So <laughs> I, I don't want to interrupt. It, well, no, it's 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 just a matter of like what are the beats. So so what are the beats of the well, of the sketch? Well, I guess um, that's what that's what my question is. Like, so you have this thing which could be a sketch, but it also could be something else. Mm-hmm. when do you decide like i'm going to make this into this thing you know because like there I, I feel like there is a joke that could be worked on there is a longer like you know weird story that could be worked on um do you ever come to a crossroad where you're like i have to decide w- what this is and make it that thing well yeah if, if if it's just something personal it's just for you there's no constraint on it from an external source you 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 essentially kind of figure it out when you start outlining when you start like beating it out and you see like oh actually now i i've discovered that actually she wants her husband to be dead and he's he and he's actually in the mafia or so you know what i mean like and and so you see that it's going further than you necessarily thought it was um but I I like to outline. Some people don't, but I, I do think it is really, really helpful to just have a roadmap that will also totally change as soon as you start writing. And that's okay too. Um, but I think I hear you asking, like, how do you know exactly what form something is? And you you sometimes you do right away. Sometimes you tell yourself, well, I'd like to have a feature script, so I'm gonna make the, I'm gonna try to make this a feature. Mm-hmm. Um but for the most part, you don't know until you really dig in and you figure out like who these people are and, um, and what their needs are and when will their, when, when are their needs met, um, or not met. And then you kind of figure, figure it out that way, if that makes sense. No, it absolutely does. And normally it doesn't really happen, uh, to me like this, where it's like, I don't really even know what this is. But I think that there is an interesting crossroad here where if we were to make it into a like a quick comedic skit, it it has that potential. 
being that it also could be the beginning of something longer and right. grimy, mm -hmm. it also has that potential. So it doesn't really happen very often to me where I'm like, well, I don't really know what this could be. And I would need to choose to keep going. I yeah, think. I mean, for the most part, a cold open of a show is essentially a sketch. Hmm. Like it, if mm -hmm. you look at it that way, um, a a short joke is a is a blackout, like a blackout on like in a, in a live show. A blackout is just a, a a sketch that's one minute, thirty seconds to a minute long. You know, so if you look at it that way, yeah, I mean, uh, you're essentially going to write a sketch that could end up being the cold open to hmm. something longer. You know, oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Dylan, I, I think I took up a lot of our time uh, jibber jabbering. A, I want to know what the thing you mentioned that you thought up yes. was. Oh, uh, it would be a good way to extend the length of it where the guy returns the package to her, doesn't hear anything from her, gets curious, goes up and asks if she's OK. And she goes, yes, they've been sending me parts for a while now and I just don't respond and they keep bringing them to me. And she's just like. I, I'm washing my hands of this entire situation. <laughs> she's also the wrong address. Uh, or she's the right address and she oh. either A, doesn't care, or B, we extend it further. And she's a necromancer who's like, they'll send me enough pieces. I can bring them back myself. That's I'm fine building, with me. I'm building a human. <laughs> All right. Oh, you find out that they're giving like her little parts of her husband back. And they don't know she's a necromancer or something. And she's like, those suckers are just build, rebuilding him for me. Uh, it just because you escalate yeah. and you extend. So... Oh. Those are the two, the two things that I had kind of thought up. No, I... <laughs> but we've already done way back when we did a story the on necromancer, a necromancer wife with the, H yeah, with the HOA. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah we, we did wrote, that already. We wrote a little thing where it's like uh, this lady, this lady brings her husband back, and a guy keeps trying to get the HOA to to shut it down, and there's nothing against dead people in the mm -hmm. HOA because he keeps his lawn, you know, manicured. I've got um, the third act. I've got the first act of that screenplay somewhere in my Google drive. Okay, probably Katie Rich, work on it. But it's not a dead person if she's bringing it back. It's technically not, right? Well, yeah, eventually he I will. I guess un undead, technically. An undead person. Yeah, and that's when you get to you know, the, the, the legit litigious matters, because who knows what <laughs> right. they actually are, if they're dead or not. Uh, but, Miss Rich, what we're going to do is we're going to take time, figure out this is a skit, a movie, a drama, a buddy cop thing, who knows. Either way, we just need to tell you how much we appreciate your time, uh, your energy, your humor. Um, you know, people that are doing the things that we want to do, just having a conversation with them. Uh, and I hope that they, you, they understand that it really gives us this interesting fuel to go make more stuff and to keep uh, creating content and to get us to that point where it's like, okay, we're making stuff for people now. That's so thank awesome. Yeah, thank That's you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we really course. appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This was so fun. <laughs> oh, awesome. Yeah, great. Um, and wh where would you like people to find you? Uh, something to go watch or listen to? Uh, anything at all or nothing? It's up to you. Definitely check out Chicago Party Ant on Netflix. Um, and I think, I think right now I have something coming up, but I can't talk about it. But mm. you'll find out, and then you'll be very excited about it. So I'll I put that be. out there. From a, I'll put a little mystery out there. Shady, Ooh, cool. Dylan's into mysteries. We write skits yeah, about them all yeah, the time. Yeah. You love mysteries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Dylan, do you have anything to say to our friends, to Miss Katie Rich, to anybody listening or paying attention still? Uh, to Katie Rich, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Uh, nothing else for anybody else. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Okay, folks, until next time, please drink some water. Uh, she has been Katie Rich. Uh, he has been Dylan Terry. I have been Zach Wiseman, but you've been great. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Take it easy out there.